brothers and sisters, welcome again. Now, we have been teaching on greater victory. Victory by faith is our focus. Our texts for this year has been 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Last uh, uh, session, we looked at victory by faith, greater victory, victory by faith. And we drew our text from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, which is our text for this month. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Even there is uh, the way I believe King James Version puts it. Some other translation, New King James Version in particular, doesn't put the even. Okay, now, so we looked at um, a number of things. We looked at uh, some outlines. We looked at what is faith and the foundation of faith. And we looked at the degree uh, or level of faith. Praise the name of, of the Lord. And just to recap again, that faith is living in the reality of the word of God. That is God's reality. According to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God rewards those who diligently seek him. And this is what this uh, definition means. Faith is living in the reality of the word of God. That is God's reality. Just knowing that God is and he is with you. Knowing that the word of God is true, but not just the head knowledge, you live in it. That's basically what we're talking about here. I know that we know faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it isn't not knowing. It is the doing. That's where we are going to. Praise the name of the Lord. We look at the foundation of faith from that our text, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. We can see there, it says, whatever is born of God, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So there you see that the foundation of faith, the faith that we are talking about here, is faith in God, faith in God, and in his son, Jesus Christ, and in his word. There may be other faith, and truly so, because, you know, there are people who have faith in their doctors. Anything that happens to them, they, whatever their doctor says do, they will do that. And it works for them. So you can see that is, there are other faith. There are people who have faith in other men, especially children. They have so much faith in their father. Their fathers are the strongest men in the whole world. The children don't believe that their fathers can be beaten by any man at all. You see, so that is faith. But of course, you know the limitation of those uh, level of faith. But at least it shows that we know what faith is. So the problem isn't not knowing what faith is. The problem is practicing faith in the right place. We're talking about faith in God and his son, Jesus Christ, and his word. Because this is the foundation of faith, the faith, the, tr the true faith, the real faith, <laughs> the faith that will bring us greater victory that we're talking about. For what overcomes the world is our faith, the faith that overcomes, the faith that brings greater victory. Glory be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we talk about the level of faith different levels of faith. I believe we remember that little faith is no faith at all. And that mustard faith, uh, 
which is the smallest grain, which you would say is like the starting point of faith, is enough to move mountains. So the issue is faith or no faith. However, that faith is, if at all it is faith, it can do a whole lot. So we are here to learn how to put that faith to work, put that faith to practice. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we looked at great faith, and we also look at full faith, or full of faith, being full of faith. Glory be to God. So according to that, our outline, we will today look at um, the three parts of faith, and then how we um, get faith, and go into the practical, the three parts of faith, and how we get faith. Yeah, and exercise faith, the practical. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me quickly share my screen to bring this into context. Okay, so I've just talked about the outline quickly. I want to reconnect us with why we are here, really. Because some people may forget where we came from. That the Almighty God gave us a very simple message about who is a Christian. So it is that journey that we are on. I believe many of you have seen this book, Who is a Christian? And if you have not seen it, please contact the facilitator. He will send you the link. There is e-copy, so you can uh, share that. E e you can read it. Who is a Christian? And the simple model God has given us is what we ascribed here, BRRBL, BRRBL model. So in that book, if you go to page 8, you will see the full description of that model, B-R-R-B-L. So that's the teaching we have been on since last year. And we have covered, if you, uh, a whole lot, up to abiding in Christ. And now we are talking about living. And in that living, the life that we are to live as Christians is where we are going now. I just run us through that again so we reconnect, so we don't forget where we are going to. A simple message is that God has given us eternal life through Jesus Christ. And he has also given us the Holy Spirit to enable us live this life and enjoy this life while we are here on earth to do the will of God and fulfill it. That's the simple message. Through Jesus Christ, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, God has given us eternal life. First John chapter 5, verse 11, that I like quoting. This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that has the Son has life. He that uh, does not have the Son of God does not have life. That is it, simple. So we have Jesus, we have eternal life. It's what we do with that eternal life that we're talking about. You need faith, praise the name of the Lord. So I'll just read through uh, um, page eight of that book just to remind us of what we mean here. Uh, when we say steps, steps to greater victory, make up your mind to glorify God with your life. Give your life to Jesus and abide in Christ. And then live. The living that we're talking about is by faith and law. So we're covering the faith bit now. Let's look at what is stated in the, that book. In page eight, it says, you must believe Jesus Christ, the son of God died for your sins. So that is the believing. Number two, you must repent, confess, and forsake all sins. Ask God for forgiveness of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
Number three, you must ask God to give you the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus and receive him, the Holy Spirit, by faith. So you can see where the B is coming from. B is believe. R, the first R is repent. The second R is receive the Holy Spirit. Number four, you must believe God and his words that you have now received the Holy Spirit and have become a son or daughter of God, therefore have become a Christian. So this is the second B, B, become. And then the last point, number five, you must now live by faith and love and allow the Holy Spirit manifest the life of God in you, just like he did in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit manifests gifts, which is the power of God, fruit, the righteousness of God, ministry, acceptable services to God, and fellowship, which is your continuous communion with God, your fellowship, personal relationship with God in you. This is what BRRBL model stands for. Is this simple model that God has helped us to teach? So we are now dealing with the L, which is live by faith and love in order to experience the greater victory that God has provided for us. Praise the name of the Lord. So the outline, as I said, we want to cover today is three parts of faith and how do we get faith and exercise faith. I'll stop sharing and now let's look at some scriptures. Let's start by the popular one. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Romans chapter 10. Verse 17. What does the scripture say there? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh, we have quoted this. We have said this. We have confessed it. We have repeated this. Ah, but why is there still no change? Hello. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. May the Holy Spirit help us to understand. It is not your word that you put faith in. Faith is not by your word. It is not by my word. It is not by the word of any man. It is by the word of God. So two important things to pick out here. Number one is that when you continually hear the word of God, it builds your faith. So please, don't stop reading the Bible. Read the Bible. Read and read and read. Whether you feel like or you don't feel like, read the Bible. Amen. And don't just read the Bible. Study the Bible. Don't just study the Bible. Meditate upon the Word of God, particularly topics. Like now we are teaching faith. Take time by yourself and look at faith till you have a personal understanding of what faith means. So point number one is that it is important to hear. But this hearing is not the word of man, is not the assumption. There, is too, uh, there, there are too many assumptions. Too much have been assumed about what God has said. You remember last time that somebody asked me a question and said, Jesus said, the root of all evil, money is the root of all evil. And you remember, I immediately squeezed my face and said, no, Jesus didn't say so. It wasn't Jesus who said so. You know, so there are so many assumptions. 
if you assume and then you said you are applying faith, brothers and sisters, I'm sorry to disappoint you. You are on your own. Faith is not assumption. Faith is not head knowledge. Faith is simple trust in God, his son, Jesus Christ, and his word. That is why I, there is, I don't know any other definition to tell us than that word that I have put forward for us. It says it is living in the reality of God. That is, you live knowing that God is, according to Hebrews chapter 6, chapter 11, verse 6. God is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of those who serve him. It is knowing that God is with you and he does what he says according to his word. <clears throat> so we are dealing with how do you get faith? How do you get faith? Having come into the foundation of faith that I have just recap, recap the foundation of faith. This faith we are talking about, it is faith in God, his son, Jesus Christ, and his word. And that is the real deal, the real faith. Amen. I've told you people have faith in other things. But faith in God, his son, Jesus Christ, and his word is what we're talking about. And how and why wouldn't you have faith in God, his son, Jesus Christ, and his word? Because he gives the best promises. He gives the best blessing, as we have dealt with in the other part of greater victory. Imagine such blessing of not falling sick for one day in your entire life. We looked at the example how the children of Israel under the old covenant went for 40 years, and I know some lived much more than 40 years because the story of Moses and of Joshua are there for us. <clears throat> Bible says that their eyes, their strength did not uh, 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 abate. Their eyes did not dim. They lived without falling sick. In the old covenant, how much more in the new covenant? So imagine a church blessing that you have been given victory over death. Death. Imagine such blessing that we have been given victory for eternal life. Eternal life. As I always tell us that eternal life is the greatest need of man. No matter what man thinks, believes, whether you accept it or you don't accept it. Because one day, every man will stand at the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. He is the judge of the whole universe. The judge of mankind. Praise the name of the Lord. So, how do we get faith? I have said number one is by hearing the word of God. <clears throat> hearing the word of God. Number two is also hearing, but this word of God is by revelation, revelation. So put it this way, that faith comes by hearing the word of God, and that the word of God comes by revelation through his spirit. So when you read the Bible, the spirit of God teaches you what the word says. Now, it is your duty to believe it. So that's one. On the other hand, the Spirit of God, without you, you're not reading the Bible at that moment, it whispers to you, gives you a message, and you are to believe it. That's only possible if you have come into Jesus Christ. That's why the foundation of faith must be clear. If you're not ready to lay the foundation of faith, as we have just talked about, B-R-R-B-L, believe in Jesus Christ, the son of the living God who died for you. Repent, confess, and forsake your sin. Ask God to give you the Holy Spirit and receive him, the Holy Spirit. Then B, become a child of God. And then L, live 
by faith. That's where we're now talking about this faith. Glory be to God. So, revelation by uh, the Holy Spirit giving us, speaking the word. And when he speaks the word to you, speaks the word to me, we must obey. The third thing, which is nothing different, is that if you don't have all still comes to the word and the revelation. If you don't have a personal relationship with God, with Jesus Christ, you will not be able to exercise faith. That's where we're going to. So it is important for you to have personal relationship, personal understanding. For example, if you know that I can afford to give you, uh, let's say, 20,000 Naira. And I tell you right now and say, hey, brother X, call me after this meeting. I will give you 20,000 Naira. And you know I can do that. When the meeting finishes, you simply call me. There won't be any argument. You call me and you simply tell me, I call for that 20,000 Naira you promised me. Full stop. And I will say, okay, yeah, here it is. Or give me your bank account, I'll send it to you. And you go and rest. Will you worry yourself? Just give me the bank account and you'll be dancing that because you know I can give you 20,000 Naira. Let's say that uh, one of your friends that uh, you know, Eh? hasn't had that capacity, suddenly tells you and say, ah, brother X, call me uh, by social time, I will give you 20,000 Naira. What will you do? You start laughing. Because from what you know of him, you have related with him. And what you know of him, you don't think he can give you 20,000 Naira. The truth is you may not even follow up with that call. This is what we are talking about. So it is important for you to know the person you are dealing with. Many people are falling sick today because they don't know Jesus as their healer. They don't know Jesus as their healer, that Jesus by his stripes has healed them. If you come to know him as your healer, you will live in divine health. You will be able to exercise that faith. Praise the name of the Lord. So, having dealt with how we get faith. How do we get faith? By hearing the word of God. Please note, it is by hearing the word of God. It is not by assuming the word of God. No, it is by hearing the word of God. What does it mean? It means that the spirit of God has given you understanding of the word. It is the word of God. Maybe at this point, let me let out something for you. For example, God spoke to me by his spirit once which drives my life even to this moment. He said, my son, when I give you my word, that's why I'm teaching you faith, because I have heard it and I have seen it work. He said, my son, when I give you my word, stand upon it even unto death, for I, Jesus, will perform it. Do you now understand where I'm coming from? Why I am teaching you what God has taught me? Praise the name of the Lord. I've also read to us what a man that God taught faith and he taught faith and God manifested and demonstrated faith greatly through him has written down uh, E.W. Kenyon. E.W. Kenyon, I will advise us to listen to his message on the two kinds of faith. 
go to YouTube and listen to it. I will share it on the WhatsApp platform as well. EWK on the two kinds of faith. He said, faith is the result of the word of God living in us. That is the word lived, practice until it becomes part of ourselves and being. Praise the name of the Lord. He went for that to say, faith comes by hearing the word of God, understand it, and by it becoming a part of us. That's it. So the three parts of faith, very quickly, the three parts of faith, because this is now the crux of the matter. The three parts of faith. Number one, is the faith word, the faith word. Number two is the faith works. Number three is the faith results. Faith word, faith works, faith results. So you must appreciate these three parts of faith because there are some people who will confess the word and they said, oh yeah, they're exercising faith. Oh, that is well and good. But is, does that fulfill the requirement of the works that is required in faith so that it will bring the result? You are the one to answer. So the three parts of faith is what? Faith word, faith works, faith result. Faith word, study the promises, believe and confess God's word. Faith works, set goals, work hard for it by the help of the Holy Spirit. Faith result, make God's word a reality. Tangible achievement that glorifies God and as a testimony to him, to his power. Those are the three parts of faith. Now let's look at two uh, key scriptures that... I believe often uh, confuse people. It is uh, what I call faith works versus grace is not of works. Faith works versus grace is not of works. Let's clarify this as we then go into practical. Amen. So in James, the book of James, Chapter 2, if we start reading from verse 20, James chapter 2 from verse 20, there you will see the Bible talks about faith without works is what? Dead. Faith without works is dead. James chapter 2, 20 to 26. But do you want to know, oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with the works and by works faith was made perfect? Hallelujah. 23, and the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. 25, likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? 26, the last verse. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So what is the Bible talking about here? That faith has an element that is word that you hear and an element that is works. What is this faith works? It is called action. Simply taking action. 
according to that word of God that you heard, that you have received. That is it. That's what the Bible is talking about. Praise the name of the Lord. So you can say, faith, faith word that I hear and believe, and faith action that I take according to what I believe. That's why I love that song. God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. I want to say, God said it. And I hear it. And believe it. And act upon it. So it is action. Faith is action. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, which is where that quotation is often made where some people sit down and confess and confess and confess the word and they do nothing. After they say God didn't move, it is out of ignorance. There is a time where the confession of that word will meet the requirement of the action of faith. But you have to know what the requirement of the action is. Praise the name of the Lord. Like you remember when we were doing greater victory over sickness and diseases and in, by implication, greater victory or victory for health. Victory for healing and health. I said, you must learn to speak the word to your body. You see, that is the action of faith required to command your body not to be susceptible to sickness and diseases because God said it and you heard and believe it then you act upon it hallelujah just giving you example oh glory be to God we are in for something great something big something dynamic Ephesians chapter 2 Let's start from verse 8. So you can read the word of God. Remember, I said faith is not assumption. There are too many assumptions about what God said and what the word of God says, which isn't true. There is no mix up of grace and faith by works. They complement and are in agreement. No contradiction at all. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Did you see that? <laughs> Is this in your Bible? No contradiction. I read it again. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Look at verse 9, where people confuse it. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. Two or three important things to remember here. First of all, he says that the grace that has saved you, saved me, walked through faith. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. It walked through faith. That's why that Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens, if you don't open, that is the action of faith. You are saved by grace. You contributed nothing for your salvation. That's what the scripture is saying here. You contributed absolutely nothing. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God gave his son for the whole human race to be saved. As many as believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. But for that grace to walk. You require faith. So the Bible says it here very simply that for by grace you have been saved through faith. Now, it says it's not by yourself. 
and it is not by your works. It's God that gives it to you. But you have to exercise faith. Do you understand now? So consistent with Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he that comes to God must believe that God eats, God exists, God lives, God is alive. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So let's illustrate this scripture. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Think about it. How were you saved? Now, when we preach Jesus, the Holy Spirit convicts the sinner. Your eyes, your heart, everything says, ah, surrender now to God. Then we tell you, open your mouth, tell him, Lord Jesus, I am sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me whole. Now give me your Holy Spirit. That is the action of faith because you believe. If you don't believe, you will not do that or assuming that you don't believe and you start saying those things by just saying, it will mean nothing and will not produce the result in your life. This is what we're talking about. So this is what the Bible says. I thought it was so important to clarify this because there are people who talk grace, 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 and they forget that grace works by faith. And that's what the Bible says here. The grace of God is available. Grace here, specifically for salvation, is available to all humankind. But it is only when it is mixed with faith that the result comes. Oh, in case you think I'm the one who makes up that, let's look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Look at verse 2 with me, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. He said, for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. <laughs> the gospel was preached to them as was preached to us. But the word which they heard, they heard it. The word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So you want to enjoy grace. You require faith. Grace is a gift, God's gift. Faith is the means by which you receive it. I say it again. Grace is the free gift of God. And there are so many graces. There are plenty graces. Oh, that we will rise up by faith and receive. The greatness, the riches, the blessings, the glory of the grace of God by faith. So, grace is the free gift of God to us, but we receive it by faith. Faith is the means by which we operationalize grace. Faith is the means by which we operationalize grace and bring grace to manifestation. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. As I just made that statement, I feel like reading uh, the statement from Apostle Paul. Oh, 
thank you, Jesus, where he talked about the grace of God in his life. Glory be to Jesus. He said that the grace that was upon him was not in vain, but he labored in that grace and he achieved much more than even those who were apostles before him. Faith is the action that we take because we believe in God. Let me, last scripture I want to bring us to before we take our exercise, an assignment that we are now going to use to do the practical. Let's look at Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. And the statement I want to make here is that faith is a leveler. Faith is a leveler. He brings a leveling playing ground. Faith is a leveler. Faith brings everyone to the same level, irrespective of your background. You can achieve whatever you want by faith. Faith is a leveler. Faith brings everyone to the same level. It creates a leveling playing ground for everybody. Irrespective of your background, you can achieve whatever you want by faith. What do you want by faith? That's the practical that we're going to now. So Romans chapter 4, verse 16. I think you read that. Let's quickly get into the action of faith. So the action of faith. You're going to take Hebrews chapter 11, which we read last time. You will read from verse 1 to verse 11. Then you will jump and continue from verse 17 to verse, verse 37. Okay, let's stop at verse 35. Verse 35. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 11, then from verse 17 to verse 35. This is the assignment, the exercise. You will read that, and this is, what I call the hall of faith for the Old Testament. And when I say Old Testament, I mean Old Testament of the Bible. I don't mean Old Testament as a covenant because you see Abraham here. Abraham is not in the Old Covenant. This is another teaching. Okay. He's the father of us all. He is the Genesis of this faith that we are talking about. Jesus is the seed of Abraham, praise the Lord. So this is the hall of faith for the people of the Old Testament, all those in the Old Testament of the Bible. Everything they achieved, I told you that you can achieve much more. Now, look at what they achieved. From that, as you heard, faith is by hearing. Write out for yourself five things. Five things, big things that you want to pursue. You want to achieve by faith. Because as the scripture says, by faith, even a mustard grain size of faith, you can move mountain. Look at this portion and write down five, just five aspects of your own life. It's now your life, but look at your example and look at your life and say, in this my life, if this men and women achieve this by faith, 
and they are of the Old Testament, I too can achieve it because God says so. God has done it for them. God can do it for me. Write down those five. Now we're going to take those five and we'll walk through the strategic plan. Um, that I told us, now you can see. So the steps, we are here talking about exercise faith in God and in, in his word. I believe you can see my screen. We will then take that and you will develop your 2021 strategic plan with the help of the Holy Spirit. It is this, these five key areas of achievement that you put down, we will be working with. When we walk how you develop those, then what would you do daily? You walk your plan. That is, you take action of your plan. You engage in intense prayer and confession of God's word over your life and plan. This is how to live by faith. So this is the area we will now focus on. Now that you know how to get faith, You know the three parts of faith that go together, faith word, faith works, and faith resolved. We are now going to live by faith in exercising our faith. Thank you. This is where we want to stop. I want to pray for anybody who is connected, who wants to give his or her life to Jesus. I want to pray for you. Pray with me and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I surrender my life to Jesus. I confess my sins to you, almighty God, that I am a sinner and I ask forgive me all my sins. I repent of my sins and I forsake them. In the name of Jesus, Father God, give me your Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit of God by faith. And now, Lord, I thank you for making me your child. I am a child of God. I shall live and I shall fulfill all of God's will for my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving me all my sins and for making me a child of God. I'm grateful and thankful to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to pray for the rest. Uh, pray with us, rather. Let us all pray. You have heard the word of God. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit will guide you as you go into the practice. After this prayer, please, I'll still allow a few minutes, two minutes, in case you have a question or something struck you that you want to share. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all your children who have connected upon this platform and who have heard your word. Holy Spirit of God, I ask, give everyone wisdom. Give everyone understanding. I have challenged your people by your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, you would teach them your word even much better than they have heard now. In the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you guide every one of us as we go to practice what we have heard, to put down our action of faith, our desire, our, the things we want to achieve by faith to glorify you, our Father, and Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, guide every one of us in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray for this, your children, that in this year, 2021, they shall experience the great grace that you have made available for them. They shall enjoy your greater victory for their lives in every area of life, spiritually, physically, materially, mentally, socially, emotionally, in their soul, in every aspect of their life and existence. So let it be. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed.
And in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. Have a victorious week and conquer by faith in the name of Jesus.